Today's in-studio guest, how about this? This is such a pleasure and an honor to be joined by the one and only Joe Piper. Yes, there he is. Big Joe, in studio. Flash. Tremendous. How, are you? how you doing? Great Great to see you. Oh, look at this guy. Man, rock solid. Look at you. <laughs> Unbelievable. Not Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Nice to meet you in person for the first time. Yeah, man. This is great. Third occasion. I'm, I'm yes. actually here. I'm, We're rolling. We just spoke here. a couple weeks ago. And yeah. Who would have thought? Uh, yeah, thanks yeah. for doing this. I appreciate you coming in. Yeah, thank By you. By the way, I saw your Instagram story today. I noticed you said you hate New York City. I hate driving here. Why? Man, it has never been an easy way in okay. or an easy way out. How was it this time? <laughs> uh, I mean, it took me like 25 minutes to find some parking, but it wasn't terrible. It was, uh, it's just, they're, they'll just walk. They don't even look. They yeah. just walk. But uh, it's, like it's just me mess. not being used to it. You know what I mean? It's very how, how, how far is the drive from where you live? You live in Philly or outside? So I live in Washington Township in New Jersey. So I'm like oh. 20 minutes outside of Philly now. But I've already, uh, it was more or less a convenience move. I used to live in Delco in PA. Okay. Um, but uh, it made sense with the two gyms that I have, a strength and conditioning coach, jujitsu gym, and then I have my MMA gym. So how long was this commute? Uh, this was a two-hour drive. Damn, okay. Not bad at all. Not bad? Nah, I all mean, right. it's two hours, man. To come see the man, it's all I good. I appreciate <laughs> it. I appreciate it very much. Actually, yeah. before you came on, we were talking about uh, Wawa. Are you a big Wawa guy? I do like Wawa. What is the I thing? Because I was saying, like, what is the thing to get? And they said coffee. That's the thing? Mm, for me, it's Wawa's mac and cheese. <laughs> they have mac and cheese yeah, at the gas station? Yeah, they have mac and cheese. It's banging. What's yeah. so good about it? I just, I don't know. It's really shitty. <laughs> it's shitty, but good. Yeah, yeah it's good, man. Like, it's, it's, it's like heavy, cheesy. Yeah, it's not like the... Uh, like the craft mac and cheese, it's right, like it, right. it, it's good. It's uh, gourmet. Yeah, sort of. In a gas station kind of way. Yeah, but it's not. It's not as cheap as it sounds. Really? Yeah, it's actually good. You ought to give it a try. It's okay. not bad. Uh, um, this is not something that you eat often, given your. No, no, not unless I'm not in a camp, which right, right now I'm not in a camp. I okay. have not had it, but I will. I uh, it kind of sparks the appetite, so I might. <laughs> By the way, how much you weigh outside of camp? Uh, currently I'm a little bit lighter. I'm like 212, 214, okay. but, uh, I usually am like 217 to 220. Okay. Yeah. And is that hard to get to 85 for you? Hell yeah. Last, last, this last cut was the hardest it's been for me because yeah. I put on size, but you know. Yeah. Like you were thick, man. Yeah. Well, I kept reminding everybody like you got like my comeback, um, starting with December, um, I fought Derek Brunson's wrestling coach and that was my first fight back. I had no strength and conditioning. I was just killing the cardio, killing, you know, the reps and and just trying to, you know, get my muscle endurance up. So I was never off long enough when I did accept the fight to really do any strength training. And then um, you know, it just so happened that, you know, two short notice fights didn't come to fruition after my UFC debut and I went on my strength and conditioning program finally and was able to eat and I've gotten a lot better with my nutrition and uh I mean, I'm a big kid. Like I can I can fill out and I can bang with these guys. So Do you think you'll ever fight at 205? <laughs> I, I think so in the future yeah i think really? in the future yeah i mean i you gotta give me a couple of years you know yeah, yeah, yeah. i still i'm still a nobody in the ufc so i got to uh i got to do some work I before i with that man yeah a lot of momentum right now well listen I, i'm i'm being humble to the public because yes. the public chews people apart uh in a lot you don't of ways think you're nobody what's that you don't think you're a nobody no in my in my head i've always known i was going to be here you know so that's why it's like you know you see some people that get in front of a camera and they don't know how to talk they don't know how to act or there's nervous you know i even got asked today like are you nervous i'm like i have nothing to be nervous about i'm me right so uh and i've always expected me to be here you know so it's it's a little bit of arrogance but hey listen i i, I marched to the beat of my own drum and i've always known i was going to be here and here i am by the way, I don't know if it's because you're so tall. I feel a lot shorter than you. Look at look at you on the screen right here. You look like 15 sizes <laughs> taller than me. Are you trying to make me look bad? I, I got a, I got a wide back, but I'm not. I, I can't. I need to lift my chair up or something. Oh this man, I'll, I'll put I'll put my hat backwards you look if like that's a okay. Mountain man next to me. Golly, oh, look at look how big you look. Yeah, you look gigantic. I look, I look fat, man. Look, that's fat. Holy shit! Yeah. Look at your arms bigger than my head. Yeah, uh, no, I'm, I'm definitely a little heavier right now, but uh, you know I've been uh, you know trying to get go to the doctors and get looked at and make sure that my body's healthy and, you know, figure out what's next. And so, so this is a great transition. What we were just talking about to uh, part of the reason. And one of the big things that you're doing this week is tomorrow you're having a screening for this documentary that was made about you. Uh, it's actually at the American dream mall, not open to the public. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, I don't know if you've ever been to the American dream mall. No, sir. Uh, it's a fantastic time. Right. By the way, if you, you know, it's one of the biggest malls, if not the biggest in America, it's relatively new and it has like an indoor, um, wave pools, surfing. It's like one of those crazy ones, like the ones in Dubai. Oh, wow. Uh, a ski mountain in there. 
in the mall. I haven't even looked this place up. It's insane. I had no idea. Oh my God, you're going to be blown away. It's right next door to where the Giants and Jets play. Yeah. There's a ski mountain. There's an indoor thing. There's a whole amusement park and Nickelodeon. It's insane, this place. Oh, man. Uh, so if you have some time, go check it out. But I watched the documentary. It's called Road to the UFC, Joe Pfeiffer. You sent it to me, and I wanted to talk to you about it. That's why I didn't, I didn't send you any thoughts. You asked me for my thoughts because yeah. um, yeah. I knew that you were going to come on. Thank you to Lloyd and, and Marty Fish for hooking this up. Uh, it's just so you have talked you have talked about your story a little bit and, and we kind of know the story, but to to watch it in a sixty eight or so minute package continuously, it almost to a degree like doesn't feel real your story it's it's very intense, it's emotional, but you cannot walk away from that documentary from viewing that and not want to see you succeed and not want to see you win and what I mean by win is like win in life win the big one, win the belt, but just like win. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not just like win your next fight. It's 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 super, super, uh, it's super revealing. It goes and, beyond fighting. Oh my gosh, yes. Anyone, you don't have to be a fight fan to watch this. So uh, full credit to you and to, to everyone involved. And so I, I'd love to ask a, a, a number amount of questions regarding it and, and not give away too much, but you are opening up like some massive wounds here, more so than like when you come on a show like like this or anything like that. How difficult is that for you? Because this is not you talking about your career and your road. Like you're talking family stuff. You're talking about your father and your childhood. How difficult is that for you? You know, uh, at first it was difficult because, you know, I know it kind of puts my relationship, if there ever was one in the future, like in turmoil. But, you know, I've recognized who these people are being my parents. And, and this isn't a bash them. You know, first of all, you've never heard. I will say this. Like, I, I don't have uh any close connections with family whatsoever uh, not a single one not a single one i have four sisters i have four sisters and none of them talk to me why is that and uh i mean i just think it was such a broken home that everybody points the finger at each other uh especially among that side of the family um they're never in um they're never all okay and loving enough with each other where if i'm talking to you and you're my brother the other two say that you know you're you're pieces of shit why are you talking to each other and this person did this and this person said that. So it was always like a divided family. It was teams, it was sides, it was never a family. It was separate individuals that thought that they had something over the other person. If you said anything about a weakness or being upset, it was thrown in your face. So I just think uh, as far as where I'm at right now, they don't really agree with the way that I've gone about um, exposing uh, what has happened. And it's not an issue between me and my sisters. It's an issue between me and my mother and me and my father, especially. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, to answer your question, it, it was hard because, again, I knew that if this came out, if we did this, if we went this way, um, and this was not anything about marketing. You know, we did a documentary four years ago that was an $800 camera, uh, and it was still stellar, and it was my friend who came to me saying, hey, you know, I think that you've been through a tough life and you should share this with your fans and people that want to connect with you along this journey. And as you get bigger, this is going to be something big one day. And uh, I contemplated it. I didn't like the idea at first. And then I liked the idea. And, um, you know, I just kind of realized who my dad was as a person and that there is no scenario in this life, unfortunately, that me and him will coexist without butting heads. And uh, it's a very dangerous place for me and him to be around each other because, um, he will always have an agenda to belittle me or to put me underneath of him or to somehow make me somebody that was a bad child in his eyes, you know, so which is crazy to me. And my mother, my mother, you know, um, our last outing was basically over somebody that I had uh, an issue with that was a boyfriend of one of my sisters and um, found out he was doing drugs and whatnot. And I beat his ass. And that was the last time that we have ever talked. And that was a couple of weeks before my contender fight the first time. And, and, and why did that break your relationship with your mom up? My mother uh, decided to, to believe him over me. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's, that's, that was enough for me. I had reached out Ariel over the years, you know, um, trying to mend things, trying to show that I care, you know, because I will. I will always love both my parents regardless, but they are people that um, live in the past and they'll never look to the future and they'll never, they'll never reach that next level. Like, they'll never be happy. Let's just put it that way. They'll never find happiness. Um, they hate the world. They hate everybody in it. I'm a hateful, judgmental person myself. I don't want to say hateful, but a very judgmental person myself. But I want to choose who's around me. I want to choose who I let in my life. And uh, I don't want to keep regurgitating the past. And mm -hmm. that's not what this documentary is about. This documentary is for the kids that have also had fucked up 
childhoods that, you know, uh, didn't understand emotions such as myself and uh, had to figure it out along the way by asking for help and finding mentors and guidance and, and you know, so, uh, but you know, that long, that long snippet right there is just, uh, yeah, you know, it was hard at first, but it's not hard now because it just is what it is. You know, what's crazy about it is like, even right now, right? This is, this is an appearance on my show and I'm asking you questions and it's like, it's fascinating, but this is your light. Like you're talking about your mom and dad, right? Yeah. Uh, I hold my parents like on this, you know, I feel lucky that I have my parents and not everyone, but you've, you've, like you said, mentors and we'll get to all of that. But even like now, is there a part of you? It's like, I don't really want to talk about this anymore. And unfortunately that's going to come with this documentary. The more people see it, the more questions you're probably going to ask, but I can't imagine anything more sensitive than talking about your parents, especially the way they make you feel and have treated you. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't, I don't attach anger with them anymore. Okay. Uh, I used to attach anger. Actually, when my first loss, uh, my my only true loss in my opinion and, and my professional career, I know that Dustin is a loss, you know, but that is what it is. So my one loss I lost to this guy, Jonathan Potty, who I still talk to, who I, you know, he just won a fight and I wish the best for him. But um, uh, I was suicidal during that, like training camp and depressed and all these things. What know? year is this? This was uh, 2018, 2019, okay. somewhere around there. Um, I got choked unconscious. I was winning the fight, dominating the fight and whatnot, and then um, just kind of gassed out and really had no motivation. I remember that was the first time that I wasn't angry at my mom. I wasn't angry at my dad. I wasn't angry at life. And I, and I was in a depressed phase, and I had to really like learn about who I was and learn what am I doing this for? Am I doing this to prove somebody wrong and being my father, my, my mom or anger? And then when I didn't have that, I had nothing to fight for. And, and I, I got, I got choked unconscious, you know what I mean? So, uh, I've, I've really let go of all the feelings attached to my past because the further I get away from it, it, it's not something that's stopping me from moving forward today. I understand what it is. I didn't have the hardest life, but I had a, a, a rough road of constantly failing and failing and failing and feeling empty. And it's like, man, why? You know, so I had to address those problems and I addressed them even more after I lost my contender fight. And just, if you understood how much was missing for me to even get to that and be there and how many people I've asked for help and how many people I've been like, man, I don't like what I'm feeling. I don't like how uh, angry I get. I don't like why I'm fighting all, uh, out of this and so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's, 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 it does get annoying to talk about it. Um, it's not annoying now, you know, because I understand that the way I'm spinning it is this is inspiring kids. This yeah. is changing kids. This is helping those athletes that want to quit, you know, and, and they don't know why they're going to keep on pushing. Well, look at my look at my scenario. When they watch this, there's no way that somebody can sit there and complain that they can't do the same thing. doesn't matter if it's MMA. doesn't matter if it's a job. doesn't matter if it's a, you know, a professional sport. I kept pushing and there was no light at the end of the tunnel, but I had a light inside my chest, inside my heart and you know, I got to where I needed to be, where I always wanted to be, and I had no plan B. So, yeah, I mean, it's annoying, but um, it's not annoying anymore because I changed my perspective on how to approach this. By the way, we, going into that fight in 2018, the, the first loss, why were you suicidal? Um, I just feel, felt sorry for myself. I, I couldn't get over why my dad didn't want to be in my life. I couldn't get over um, what was wrong with me. I used to think there was something wrong with me. I used to think I had a learning disability. Uh, I used to ask, one of the biggest questions I used to ask was, uh, why doesn't the guy love me? You know, what did I do wrong? Uh, is there something wrong with me? And everybody's looking at me with the side eye. Cause I used to get a lot of looks all the time, but you know, I didn't realize that my face wore my emotion. So I'd sit there and like, my face was almost like fucking deformed. Like I have this upside down frown on my face and I had just, I had no money, bro. You know, like I had no money. I was depressed. I had anxiety. It was like, I got my car repossessed. I was, I was broke. And, um, you know, and, and even though I was undefeated at the time, it's like people don't give a shit about you in this in this game when you're fighting. When's the next fight? Oh, you know, there's no, hey, how's Joey Pfeiffer doing? How, how's he as a person doing? And I had to realize that nobody gives a fuck, you know what I mean? And, and there are people, I'm not saying that, there are people and those are the select few that you keep around you, you know what I mean? Um, but, uh, you know, as a whole, I just, I burnt out trying to fight out of anger. It wears you mentally thin and it's sooner or later, I don't care if you're 35 and 0 it's going to burn out, you know, that's exhausting to carry around and use anger as a motivation. And I think that's what happened. It caught me early and it caught me early enough that I could fix it. And I fixed it. Uh, one of the very compelling things about the documentary is the footage. Um, and, uh, and I'll ask you about the footage later on, but like footage of you as a youth, there's a yeah. lot of stuff. 
how did you get that? So, do you own that stuff? Because yeah, you know, I own it. You own it, okay? Yeah, yeah. And you kept all that? Like, yeah. Cause... So, uh, so basically, we had a. Uh, we were a poor kid. My parents combined, like poor family, not poor kid. Uh, my parents combined never made more than thirty thousand dollars between a household of seven. Wow. Two parents, five kids. Okay. And uh, you know, I grew up in the suburbs and grew up on uh, basically a, like sort of a farm, and uh, loved it. I love it. I love that life. You know. So, but. Uh, um, the the tapes my dad had a uh, video camera and they had like the little the mini VHS tapes and they were going to throw them out. My mom was going to throw them out or my dad I don't remember which one I think it was my mom was going to throw them out. She had them at the house, and I was like, nah, don't throw that out. Like I'll get them converted. And she always wanted to convert them to DVDs anyway, but never knew how. So I got them uh, from her and then I got them I gave them back to her. So she still has them too. But um, I got them converted to a USB drive. So I have two USB drives and that's what I gave. Wow. Uh, to Chandler, but it cost me a thousand dollars back when I had no money to do it. So yeah. I kept putting it off and putting it off. And I wanted it not for any of this, but I wanted it for my own, you know, remembrance of my childhood because I didn't have anything good from it. Um, you know, we had some good times, but as an overall, it was, you know, it was, it's one of those things like the further you get away from it, the more you forget it. And I feel like that was a piece of my childhood I could hold on to that would remind me, you know, some of the good things, you know, just. And when I say good things, like the peace in life. Yeah. And realizing I didn't have responsibilities. And, you know, for the times that were good, you hold on to those, you know, but you don't let it override what the reality is. Was there any footage that was too personal that you didn't want to? Yeah. 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 There's certain shit I wouldn't put out there. You know, there, there's, there's always going to be stories because I never want to. This isn't a bash my dad type thing. Yeah. You know what I mean, this was, hey, this is what I went through and this is how I overcame it. That's what this story is about. And this is how persistent and resilient I was to get here. Because nobody gave me shit. You know what I mean? And I'm not, I'm not one of these guys that's going to sit here and um, say I hate the man. I don't hate the man. You know, I, I despise him as a person. I don't think he's a good human being. And I think he has an illness. That's, that's how I've looked at it. It's like I, it's nothing I can fix. There's nothing. He doesn't want to change. You know? So, um, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, there's some things I'll never talk about um, publicly because I think the man would get in trouble. And uh, that's not what this is about, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm good with it. How is he towards your sisters? Physically abusive. That's right. why I've never mentioned my sisters. You know, he's gripped them up by their neck, gripped them up by their hair. Um, you know, my parents used to beat us and literally tell us, like, we're not going to stop beating you until you cry type thing. So, you know, my mom was physically abusive. My father was especially physically abusive, especially to me. And uh, he was also abusive, you know, strangling my sisters before and things like that. It's like, you know, my, I remember one scenario where it was like my sister also struggled with like uh, depression and uh, picked her up from school after she had told them she wanted to hurt herself or whatnot. We come in the door, you know, he wings her in the house and start strangling her in between the couch. Like that's how that's how he responded to us being upset. So, you know, there's many situations, my man, many, 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 yeah. many. And, and how uh, old are you like in this particular story? Um, she was in high school, so I would have been like 13, 14. Yeah. And would you try to stop it in those cases? Oh, uh, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. That would we, just lead to more problems for you. I mean, right? I get beat up for it, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, you know, we'd all, we'd all try to do something at that point. You know, you can't, you can't be a full grown man that knows how to fight, that knows jujitsu, and, and be strangling a 15 year old uh, defenseless oh, girl, girl. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, there's a lot of there, that, those kind of things bring back anger for him, you know, but. Dude's a coward. How was he towards your mom? Physically abusive. As well. Um, yeah, physically abusive. Um, cops were called many a times, and, um, you know, we were a religious family growing up, so, uh, you know, I watched him drop my mom in front of us. Uh, you know, we you all, drop? Like, like, body shot my mom. Yeah, yeah they were physically abusive. My mom was physically abusive to him, too, you know, and verbally abusive. They were both. They were perfect for each other, you know. Two, <clears throat> two people that basically had kids not to love their kids, but to fix their own problems. And that's the wrong reason. Right. And uh, I understand that now, you know, I didn't understand it then. And I feel bad for them. You know, my mom grew up in like a cult like religious home where she was browbeaten every day of her life to a point that it's not about the religion, it's about control. And my dad was a Kensington rat in Philadelphia that had, um, you know, from his words, I can't speak on it, but you know, had a very abusive and, you know, some people have testified to it, you know, a much harder life than me. Ran away from home at 14, home hopped, and was going to kill himself and jump off the bridge at 19 years old. He got sent down uh, to a church, and that's where he met my mom. So, you know, uh, they were almost married for 20 years. 
and and you left home you were a teen right 16 16 yeah, and now you're and you're doing the same right like you're jumping around you're, no i'm on my own i'm on my own you're 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 at this point are you sleeping on on like a bench no 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 uh, what at 16 yeah 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 when i left yes absolutely um you're in I, school at this time yeah i was in school i joined wrestling so i could shower and things like that and it was only for like a week um maybe a little bit more than that but uh and then i found a kid that i wound up defending um against a racial slur and uh that's how i met this kid and this kid had his brother who was in juvie and i wound up moving into it bro the house was like basically condemned it was like the whole the whole block wanted to get rid of this house because it was uh like cat piss infested it was a hoarder's house it was like everything was sticky from the walls to the carpet like the carpet that used to be like white was brown like a like a brown sugar color there was roaches my my wrestling coach uh used to help me like try and like clean it up a little bit so that way it was habitable um there was black mold asbestos all that so that's where i lived throughout high school Jeez. but if you had seen it, it like that's the only thing that i am a little bit uh bummed about that i didn't actually get to have uh, a picture of or footage of you know but i really wanted to block that part of my life out and that's where i lived until um once once i got like moved in with him um, that's where i lived until i graduated high school and how many years were you there for uh, a little over two wow two yeah. And, and, and you said you slept on the bench for like a week or so, which to me would feel like an eternity if I'm 16. Yeah. Is that terrifying? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's traumatizing. It's, it's, you feel worthless. Um, you feel like it's the end. You feel worthless. You feel like it's like, what did I do wrong to deserve it type thing? You feel sorry for yourself, you know? Um, and you feel sorry for yourself more than ever. Uh, especially cause I didn't, you know, I don't have money. I don't have a phone to fucking call anybody. I had a no contact order. I can't call my mom. You know, I testified in court against her. Uh, so oh, it, like, got, it went yeah. that far. Yeah. So when we split, my dad was cheating on my mom towards the end. And uh, when we split, I came up with my dad because I never wanted to give up the MMA and the jujitsu. My mom fucking hated me. You know, my mom was threatening to put me in juvie and things like that because I told her I would swing on her if she ever put her hands on me again. And uh, so she hated me for that reason, which that's fine. You know what I mean? It is what it is. But, you know, my mom was into horses and farm life and things like that with my sisters. So they, they all hated me, too, just as much. So I'm um, sorry. No but, uh, but when my dad left, I was like, I'm not, I'm not staying with my mom. I knew I would get put in a home or something like that or something where it's juvie, something. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I moved up to Media PA from Jersey. And then that's, that's how I uh, wind up going up in, in PA. But, Did the kids at school know this? Uh, the kids, no. I mean, they didn't know at the time, no. No, like, like, did they know what you were going through at home? Did your friends at school? Did you uh, tell no, them? No, I didn't really have friends like that, man. You didn't I, have friends I, like I that? I didn't have friends. Like, my best friend was my wrestling coach. Um, yeah, I hated kids. <laughs> Why? I just uh, I just didn't feel like I was mentally in the same level that they were. You know, they'd talk about girls and all this shit, and I would sit there and play chess every day with my coach. You know, that's what I cared about. And I was, you know, I was going through something traumatic in life that no kid would understand. And uh, that's kind of how I, I looked at it. It was like, these kids aren't on my maturity level as far as like what I'm going through and dealing with in life. And I had truancy officers coming after me and all this shit. And then I found out somebody called like child services. And it was like, I, I was, I, you know, I didn't want to open up to anybody for that reason. It was like, I'm happy living in the shithole that I'm living in, knowing that I'm not around somebody that's going to beat my head in. Right. I mean, the things I would get beat up over, bro, were, were, were asinine. Like it was stupid, you know, like, uh, a video game was one of the worst beatings that I got. What do you mean? Uncharted three. Cause I was stealing his kills in a cooperative fucking split screen. Swear to God. I'm laughing because it's, you, uh, you're playing with your dad, playing with my dad. Yeah. He's getting mad yeah. that you are beating him. Yeah. Yeah. His ego would get on the line. Cause I was always better than, uh, in, in video games. And it was like a challenge to him and he would think I would do it to get a rise out of him. And it's like, bro, I'm playing the fucking game. And what and, do you, uh, like? How does he react? Get up and wing the fucking controller at my head, and that's how it starts. Jesus. And uh, and then he, you know, if I said anything smart mouth, like, what the fuck is wrong with you type thing, it would turn into a fist fight. And how old are you? Uh, 15. 15. 15. And you're. And you Listen, are... this 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 was not fifteen. This was something I started getting beat at a year old. A year. I started getting beat at a year old. Both my parents blamed each other uh, for it. You know, uh, the, like where child services was called because, or, or the cops were called, I'm sorry, not child services, but the cops were called because my mom would come home and this is how my mom says it, that there was bruises all over my body. And she was like, oh, how, what's going on? He's like, basically they blamed it on that. Uh, I was left unattended too long and I shit myself <laughs> as an infant. So that's, 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 you know, I think that does something to you. 
whether I subconsciously don't know it or not, or, or know it or not. But uh, yeah, I mean, I've, bro, I've been getting beat since I had memory. And I don't think I really had a memory until like four and a half, five years old. I can't even wrap my, I have three children. I, can't, I know what it is to have a one-year-old. I can't even imagine doing that to a one-year-old. I mean, I don't... Uh. But that's why you grow up sometimes. Like, when you hear those things, it's like, what the fuck did I do wrong? You know what I mean? And this isn't... A, again, I don't, I don't want the people that are viewing this to think that this is like a sob story. This is just... This is, this is very common, believe it or not. You know what I mean? This is a very common thing. It's just... Uh, for my own struggles and my own mental clarity, it's like, what the fuck did I do wrong? Mm. Couldn't figure it out. Couldn't figure it out. So when you meet this coach, that was like the first sort of like... I feel like, and, and the coach's name? Um, Will Harmon. Will Harmon. Yeah. And, and, and he's the one whose wife used to make- uh, Sandwiches. Two yeah. sandwiches, right? And he yeah. would give you one because you had no food. Yeah. Which is just, seems like a saint of a human being, he if is. I'm being honest. I wouldn't and, be here without him. Right. Where is he now? He still lives at the same house that he took me in. And, okay. And this um, is not the, 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 the like rat infested house, no, right? No, 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 This no, was no. the next yeah. house that you no, lived the, in? The kid I lived with was- um, uh, a kid that was on the wrestling team, a heavyweight kid, um, and he was adopted by a white man. So he was African American. He was adopted by a, a white Welsh man that was a teacher for a middle school. Um, but then he had alcohol problems, so he had like kidney failure or liver failure or whatnot from drinking too much. Uh, wound up losing his job and things like that, and, and just like got depressed because his son was in and out of juvie. Um, I'm pretty sure his son. I don't want to like say too much, but uh, his son was obviously a troubled kid, and then. Wind up getting shot for trying to rob somebody, and, and I believe there was a rape case against him. So there was like this was going on while I was living there. You know, okay. this kid would bring people from the hood <laughs> uh, with like guns and shit in the house, and you know, me and him obviously had issues about that. And uh, yeah, I just needed to get out of the house. But um, you know, fortunately, uh, the guy, the man, and his son were nice enough to let me rent that room from him. So Coach Will, he is he the one that suggests? bring you to his house or do you yeah. ask him? No, he uh, he suggested it um, when I told him I had nowhere to go. And I was like, uh, basically, I had moved out of that house and I had moved in with a best friend. And uh, that was a whole fucked up situation in itself that wound up not working out. And I gave up my job to pursue fighting full time because I had gotten out of a toxic relationship with a girl that I carried on with outside of high school. Uh, and then that supposed best friend was not that much of a best friend. Uh tell you that off the record yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and uh yeah i mean uh, i got my car taken away and everything he gave me the money f to get my car back um i had no insurance my phone everything went i just gave up like i, I just was like fuck it i'm quitting i'm done i'm going full time or nothing and what was the job <laughs> i worked at la fitness okay i worked at la fitness as sales as it oh sales yeah and my, my fucking general manager was stealing my sales appointments and changing the last names come on man <laughs> so when i found that out i was like all right i'm quitting and i gave it a finger and i was like fuck you i quit and i locked out <laughs> Jeez. so at this point are you thinking like can i catch a break no I, I was just i wanted to hurt people man i wanted to hurt people i was like put me in a cage i must smash people and uh, uh you know in some way i was just like i deserve this shit you and, deserve uh, this shit. I felt like it. You know what I mean? I felt like it because at the end of the day, I, I used to be so convinced and so uh, trained to believe that anything good that was going to happen was going to get ripped away. Um, so you get this toxic cycle and this toxic uh, reoccurring situation of thinking things are too good to be true. And that's not, that's not true. You know what I mean? That's perspective. That's just changing the things that are around you that are, are, are convincing you of that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I quit. I got everything taken away and Harmon looked me in the face, gave me the money to get my car back. Uh, because I was always in the cars. It was a 2006 black Mustang GT, and uh, it was like 12 grand when I bought it. And wow. I paid it off over like five years. The interest was fucking insane, but um, yeah, he gave me the money. I got it back, and the first fight I had back, I paid him back. Wait, so what year was your first fight? Uh, 2017, right here. 2016, I think. What what uh, what state here? The, the exact date is... Uh, it would have 20... been December. So your amateur debut was in 2016. Yeah. Was that December or November? November. November. 18th? Uh, your, 17th? 18th. Uh, your pro debut was 2018. Yeah. Um, May. Do, do you remember who, who the opponent was? Steve Covington. Promotion? Fucking mounted. Yeah, that was Art of War. Art of War. I mounted Covington. that motherfucker. That was one of my favorite knockouts. C could you describe like what state you're in for your pro debut? Like mental state? Yeah. Where are you at in your life? 
in fighting out of anger, man. Fight, Still, yeah. Fighting out of anger. That's your Still. fuel. Yeah. That's yeah. your That engine. was. That was yeah, my yeah, fuel. Yeah. That, that was my fuel because it was working. Like, if you watch my early career, that's why I think it's funny because all these guys in the UFC that think I'm just like going out there and blowing my nut. I used to do that. You know what I mean? I used to do that. Yeah. That's how I used to fight. You know, I calmed down. I believe in my skills. You know, I used to go out there and just try to hurt people. And I knew I could knock people out. So I was like, I just need one. I just need one. I'm going to hurt them. I'm going to hurt them. And uh, we kind of just like, like pedal to the gas. There was no, there was no like breaks. It was just a hundred percent. And uh, you know, when you get to the top tier, <clears throat> I can still be better. Than, I, I know I'm better than anybody I've ever fought, loss or not, hands down. So, uh, you know, but I usually was so intent on winning every second, and that just kind of catches up with you. You know what I mean? You mm -hmm. gotta learn to control. You gotta learn to be calm. You gotta learn to be patient. A lot of these things that I didn't apply, you know, because I didn't have the cage time and I wasn't mentally present. So. I would just say that I was still a great athlete. I was still very powerful. I was still very skilled enough to go through with what I was doing. And, um, you know, I had a shit diet. I didn't have money for, like, you know, good foods. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't have a strength conditioning coach. I didn't have a nutrition coach. You know, all these things that you don't have and people don't understand, you don't get these things when you start out. And, uh, you know, I still made it to the Contender Series with maybe two teammates three times a week doing pads with a part-time coach who had a, a, a full-time job and a family. Uh, you know, no wrestling coach since high school. <laughs> and I still made it. You know what I mean? So that's why it's like, give me all the tools that I've had in the past yeah. two years. and Give me a strength program. It's why my body looks better. It's why I looked calmer. It's why I looked poised in there. That's one of the things I was pissed with this Gerald fight, like I told you. It was like all these fucking people that kept looking at me. And it's like, dude, I've been doing it my whole life. Yeah. What am I scared of? A crowd? Yeah. For what? I already got beat by life, you know what I mean? Uh, in, in a lot of ways. Like, I have no pressure. I, I'm me now. This right. is me. This is, what I, this is what I see myself doing. I have nothing to be scared of. Obviously, I got the nerves and everything like that, but I'm not going to choke under a fucking, because people are screaming for me. Right, right, right. <laughs> I'm going to be more, you know? So, yeah. yeah but. but when you're climbing the ranks and having success, you're undefeated, all that, is your dad trying to rekindle? Is he trying to, like... He just, no, he, uh, he, I never blocked him, you know? I never wanted to give him the satisfaction of blocking him because it was like, I mean, like I his don't, phone number? Yeah, 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 yeah. I never blocked him because it was like, let him watch my success, you know? That's what's going to hurt him. And that's how I started making the change. It was like, I don't have to sit there and argue with him in a text message, you know? There were so many times that he would be like, come here now, pussy, we'll fucking fight, and da 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 You're kidding. Yeah, 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 all the time. He was like, he, he would try to lure me because... I would get emotional, and then he would try to lure me to come. Oh yeah, da 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 da, and you know, I'll fucking shoot you, like things like that. Um, and it would it would be funny, you know. He threatened me out in front of my insurance guy's place before, and everybody saw it. You know, I'll come back, put a bullet in your fucking head, type thing. And it was like, that's cool. You know what I mean? You hate me, but I, I'm not walking around hating you no more. I used to say, what are you so mad about? What are you so mad about? And then you'd see him fucking like freak out and all this shit. So this is what it is, man. I um. I, I, I let him text me and I didn't block him because I, I a part of me like kind of didn't mind. Like, go ahead, keep watching. You're watching me, I'm not watching you. You plateaued in life, I'm climbing. Right. You know what I mean? So it was almost like that, you know, like, fuck you, keep watching. You're my biggest hater. So I'll keep you close. I ain't gonna, I ain't, you'll never see me. You'll never see me. You'll never be able to get that close to me. I'll always keep you here. Right. But sure, you can text me. But now it's like. Did he I, go to your fights? No, never. Never did? Never. I left him tickets one time, gave him a fucking shout out even after I won because I thought he was in the crowd and he knew he wasn't there. <laughs> When's the last but, time you had any conversation with him? Um, he texted me a couple times, but I wound up getting a different number because I was like, I'm done. Not enough. Yeah, I'm done. So uh, since you've been in the UFC, uh, the only the last the last like real conversation with him um, was when I broke my arm. He sent me a picture of Dustin Stoltos with my arm broken half, and he said, "Just how you like it, face down, ass up." I told you this would happen when you fight a real motherfucker. And so, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. How do you react to that when you see that? Uh, it made me really angry. It, he got to me. I'll give it to him. You know, I'm sure he'll watch this too. He, I think he trolls me somewhere on Instagram with a fake account. You know, a bunch of people do. I get, I get fake text messages from girls and all this crazy shit. It just comes with what we do, I guess. Right. But, uh, you know, uh, he trolls me somehow. He sees what I'm doing. I have no idea. I, I was I was just going to ask you that. Like, you, you speak very openly about him. Do you have any sort of idea if he hears all this stuff? Is he, oh, he hears. He watches he's aware. everything. Oh, yeah, he watches Where everything. do you think he is now? Do you have any idea? Yeah, he still lives in the same apartment. The oh, same wow. apartment that when we left my mom 10 years ago, he still lives in Media PA. Wow. And what does he do? Nothing. Social SSD. 
um, claimed to have had failed back surgery back in 2004. He got hit in a, an accident when he used to drive an oil truck. Um, he wound up getting surgery and, uh, you know, a part of him, I think was just a lazy motherfucker, man. Uh, he got surgery and he said it failed, right? But, you know, if he wanted to grapple all day long, he could do it. If he wanted to box all day long, he could do it. But he was always on narcotics. He was always on Vicodin or Percocets or things, things like that for his pain. Um, and, you know, not that he didn't try to get other outs and I, I don't know. He would yeah. try, like, taking things like Bromelin or Kratom or all these other, like, natural things to, like, try and help with the pain. So I think the man lives in pain and I think that's a part of his problem, but... Um, you know, I don't think the narcotics really helped. And I never really thought of that until I got surgery and I, I never take pills. I've never done a drug. I've never smoked weed. Nothing. I've never smoked a cigarette. Yeah. I've done nothing. L living on the street, all that, like being uh, in the situation, no, never I care about my body. I knew I was going to fight. You know uh -huh. what I mean? If I wasn't going to fight, I was, I was, I wasn't going to make it. I literally had, bro, I have, I couldn't tell you. And now, now that I'm older, I would say, hey, in another life, I was supposed to be a race car driver. I love cars. Okay. I love cars. I love working with my hands. I love working on cars. That's what I found is like a passion, um, aside from fighting, because I think you have to have that if you want longevity, if you want mental clarity, you know? And, uh, but yeah, no, I, um, I'm very open about it because it's just, it's the reality of what my life was and I have nothing to be ashamed of. I have no reason to hide from that, you know? And he can see this shit. Say it to his face, but, you know, I won't ever let him get face to face with me. I'm past that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm on to bigger, better things. I want to secure my future. I, you know, I want to help kids. I want to, I want to volunteer. I want to do things like that. And I'm not, I'm not, and I always say, this is why I said on the last thing, I, I'm, I don't ever want to sit here and be like, I'm a role model. I am far from it. But, but you I, are though. Nah, I don't want to be though. I don't want that. I don't want that responsibility. It's Why not? Me. Because I, I, I say some off the wall shit and this is a cancel culture world. Yeah, you know but, what I mean? <laughs> but like for kids, man, like if there's a kid, I saw you say, um, uh, what's the term that you use? You said uh, throwaway kids. Is that throwaway kids? Throwaway yeah. kids matter. Like, th as you said, there's a ton of them out there. Barry, I was convinced my whole life, you're a fucking loser. You're gonna sweep floors. You're gonna be this. I was never built up to I was gonna be anything. I, I, I mean, literally, I was convinced that I was gonna be a loser, a loser. You know, but I, I, maybe I shouldn't say convinced, but I believed like, oh yeah. my God, like this is the only thing I can see myself doing. If I don't really make this, I'm going to be a loser. And that scared the shit out of me. You know, it's scared. I want things in life, you know, not just materialistic things, but I want to go see the world. I think the beauty in life is going and traveling and seeing places that are breathtaking. And, uh, you know, it, it scared the shit out of me. But I literally, if I wasn't doing this, bro, I, I wouldn't be here. Do you think fighting was your only shot? It was the only thing I had in my head. There was head. no plan B? No. Like, if I don't succeed no at this... No plan B. I would kill myself. 100%. Just is what it is. I would, I would have... I would have, if this been, didn't I would work have been out, one of those selfish, weak people that killed themselves. That's a lot of freaking pressure. Some people are like, if I don't make it, I'm going to go be a whatever. You're saying you don't make it, you would have killed yourself. 100%. You believe that? Yeah. Did you tell be, your coaches that? Yeah, always, always. And what would they say when you... Well, Harmon, particularly. Um, you know, they would always just convince me that I was meant to do greater things. And if I ever wanted to, you know, uh, venture outside of fighting... Um, that I would be successful at anything because of how committed I am when I decide on something. Uh, but, you know, the, the reason I knew fighting was it for me is because I'll get up at any hour to get better at it. Mm. There's nothing else. Like, I, bro, I would get fucking fired doing anything else. Like, right. I, I couldn't fucking do ice cream. I couldn't work at a fucking Rita's. I couldn't work at Walmart. Like, I would get fired. I would be late. I wouldn't show up. I would sleep late. You know what I mean? Like, it's just fighting I take seriously and I train hard and, and I want to get better at it. And, and, you know, that's that's what I desire to be the best at. Um, and by the way, for the record, you don't still feel that way, right? No, no, no. Like no. if this doesn't work out. Yeah, no, 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 no. It, it's it's already worked out. It's already worked. It's out. already worked out. Why do you think so? Because I uh, I showed myself of all people what my value was, what I always knew, what that little little tiny fire was inside of my own brain where nobody else could enter, my own demons, my own problems, my own insecurities, my own. Uh, motivations, I brought that to light. You know, that shit's burning hot right now. And, and don't get me wrong, like right now, like you go through this, this ups and lows and like I'm a human being, I always fall off sometimes. Sometimes I'm a negative asshole and fucking hate everybody type thing. But I bring myself, I got to bring myself away to come back sometimes. You know, I know other fighters don't do that. Train, 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 train. And I will, I always train year round. But you know, some, me, I know how I am emotionally. I got to take a step back and reset and, and then come back. You know what I mean? So that's kind of where I'm at right now. I got some injuries I got to take care of. And I'm, I'm, you know, I wasn't shocked at what happened with Gerald. And I think that's kind of like 
depressing sometimes. So uh, depression, depressing. bro, it's, it's a fucking fight every day. I don't know how to explain it. It's, you know what I mean? I have to choose to be happy every day. You know what I mean? I have to choose that. I have to choose to be appreciative and things like that. Like people that just say they wake up like that, I, I'm not like that. Right. You know, it may be true for them, but I have to constantly re-motivate myself every day. You talk to someone uh, I, I, I haven't talked to somebody for a while. I mean, I have a lot of close friends that I talk to, yeah. but you know, I was talking to Eddie Alvarez, uh, the second I got back, Eddie Alvarez is very close in my life. And, yeah. uh, I think I'm going to start working with his mental coach. I need it. You know what I mean? I need it. Um, and not that I'm in a bad spot, but I always want to be in a better spot. So, um, I think I'm a fool if I'm in this position and I'm getting this attention or I'm going to keep sure, climbing yeah. and, you know, bro, look, look, there's going to be fucking people in these comments that are going to find error in this and talk oh, shit fucking. and all, you know, how that goes, yeah. you know what I mean? There, there's people like that. So, um, you know, I, I don't get offended by it. You know, I've gotten, I used to get really upset if everybody said something negative. It's like, I don't give a shit now. So it's like, I just think it's good to constantly find new ways to, whether it's meditation or, you know, reading and things like that. So, uh, I watched an interview uh, that, that the first black American sniper, uh, Nicholas Irving, and that was motivation for me, you know, like going and listening to things like that. Like that guy has been through fucking hell in life and can't even get the VA to help him type thing. Wow. You know, so I'm over here crying about my life. No, like, man. You know what I mean? So it's like someone's always got it harder type thing and I take motivation from that. So I just think it's good to have a mental coach. By the way, side note, what about Eddie Alvarez? You see that fight on on it, Saturday? I did. That fight scared me, man. Yeah. That fight scared me. Back and forth. That was cr Would you ever do that? Yeah, absolutely. You would? I beat Lorenzo Hunt. You did. He's a two weight world champion. In, I in MMA, him unconscious in MMA, my fourth professional fight. Yeah, he's there. He's their light heavyweight and middleweight. I think light champion. Light heavyweight and middleweight. Yeah. But not in bare knuckle. Would you do bare knuckle? Really? Yeah. Yeah. I kind of I believe you yeah, to be honest. I would. It's I a would. crazy thing. I mean, man, you, you like you know what you know what they get paid. I know they're doing pretty well. I would do it. Listen, yeah. I'm 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 not there yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I absolutely I would do it. I, bro, I I believe in I believe in my power, and it might be wrong, but That's I believe so far, that I yeah. can sleep any of these dudes. So. So, so I don't want to get into the whole elbow injury thing. We talked about that already. But the thing about uh, the documentary, which was, which was, again was illuminating for me, was you film. You have the footage of all like the surgeries and everything. That like, how did you? Was it just because you? I knew told them when I was going in. I was like, you guys are allowed to take video, and they're like, well, yeah, well, yeah, we can, but we don't usually. And I was like, listen, this is different. I was like, I'm coming back. Take fucking video. Of so me. that's that's next level for me because. At that point, you're not even a UFC fighter yet. You're not, um, you know, Conor McGregor, John Jones, Daniel Cormier, who's at the top, or like Weidman, who's now, you know, who had ESPN following him for the past two years coming off. You're nope. the guy on Contender Series who didn't, and you had the presence of mind. Like, let me tell the audience out there, there's foot, like, this is gruesome, but very graphic, but speaks to just what you went through. Footage, it's the whole thing, you know? And you had the presence of mind to tell someone to film that because you knew that you were going to bounce back from this potentially career-altering, life-altering injury, and that someday that this would be valuable. Like, how do you? I wouldn't have the presence of mind to do that. I, I would be utterly depressed. Yeah. How did was, you? Have the presence I was of, utterly depressed. But you still had the presence of mind. Yeah, because uh, it goes back to what I told you. There was no plan B. This is either going to work or it's not, or I'm done. And that's just I was that mentally fragile. So. Fighting didn't work for me, bro. I wouldn't be here. You know what I mean? And uh, more so than anything, and I always, I always try to say it because I don't get to see him all the time anymore. But if it wasn't for Will Harmon, I would have never made my professional debut. I lived rent free for the first three years. You know what I mean? And uh, the food and things like that. You know, that people don't understand that it is so hard to become successful in MMA as a sport in particular compared to the rest because. It's so physically demanding. And someone like me who's so emotionally invested, it's even more demanding. You know what I mean? I, I, I drain my body per camp. You know, this is why it's hard. I can't take the short notice fights yet mm. because I put everything into it mentally and physically. And it's just, it drains the fuck out of me. You know what I mean? You become, I become mind numbed. You know, after doing all that, dude, I trained so fucking hard for the, the Gerald fight and I almost broke my ribs and I, I was, I was, I was beat up, man. Like physically, I was beat up. And I had, I had some things that a lot of people were pulled out with, you know, and I, I still was like, I'm going to kill this motherfucker. Like, that's just how my mentality was. And, and, and then, you know, it's over. So it's like, 
that's where people don't understand. You know, it's all good and all, and I feel great and everything, but it's so emotional for me. That's why I cry like a bitch every time I, I fucking win. Not like a bitch. It's, it's my whole life, bro. Yeah. You know what? That's why Anyone I Anyone watches this documentary, they'll understand why. I mean, if I were, if I were you, I'd be crying even more after all of this. It's, it's unbelievable. Can I see the, how does, how does yeah. yeah, so there that, it is. That's, that's the, that's the first surgery. And then they cut all the way on the end. So they opened it back up. So I basically was stuck here. Damn. Now this is, this is it. So. Uh, I have an injury in my shoulder right now. Okay. With a rotator cuff. So, oh no. Uh, yeah. But, Surgery? Uh, uh, no, it's okay. partial tear. But okay. I do need uh, something for my left elbow. I'm, I don't know what I can can't say yet, but okay. uh, but yeah, this this I'm down for you know four to five weeks or whatever. But yeah, I mean my my shoulder every time I punch it, it's just gonna over rotate my shoulder all the time. Wow. This is my range. So this is why. I, so I had to learn. Yeah. In my first fight, I almost broke my finger yesterday grappling. Oh <laughs> That's no. That's why my finger's like fat. Oh yes. But you know, I had to learn to get my range and and snapping and 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 dealing with that all the Does time. Does it feel weird every time you oh, throw? Oh yeah, it sucks. Still, it sucks. yeah, I get, bro. I'm gonna have arthritis the rest. of I'm gonna be a pain the rest of my life. I'm gonna be an old crippled motherfucker when I'm like forty. Are you at peace with that? Yeah, I You're, did it, man. Yeah, I did it. I fucking did something I said I was gonna do that nobody else believed in. I mean, not my coaches or anything, man. Not nothing. Like not these coaches now. They believe in me. You know what yeah. I mean? And uh, they're amazing. I love them. But I'm talking like from a child, you know what I mean? Nobody believed, and I would get laughed at. Why the fuck do you wanna do that? Get punched in your face. I'm an ugly motherfucker as it is, I got it. So this is what I'm gonna do, you know what I mean? So it's like, I, I, I used to look at myself in the mirror and be like, well, you ain't fucking, like, and I'm not asking for pity, but I used to be like, well, you ain't fucking a 10. You ain't doing modeling, you ain't doing shit. Like, what are you gonna do? I was like, I, I'm not smart like when it comes to books because I don't like it. I don't wanna sit in a classroom. You know, everybody forgets that this shit is not natural. Right. Yeah, yeah. We live in a man-made world and you're told that you have special needs or, or some learning disability because you can't sit in a classroom. Right. Or you're supposed to be out there in nature, you know what I mean? But this this is built and this is the game you have to play. So it's like I, I, I refuse to sit in a classroom. I couldn't do it. And I had no motivation for it. I wouldn't do it. I fucking sucked at school. Let alone, I think I sucked at school because of what I had going on in my home life. You know, I was so distracted mentally and, and so heartbroken all the time. Right. But... uh but yeah, I mean, I'm here, man. You know what I mean? So yeah, no, I made it. I made it. In my in my mind, I made it. And I'm not content with just making it. Sure. So. Uh, and I also learned that you broke your hand upon, like right before your comeback fight. Broke it right in half here. And you still fought. Still fought. And you won. Not, but like not at, with that Yeah, at that point, you're like, God, I, again, it's like, how many things can go wrong? Bro, I was scared. That one? I was scared. Yeah, I was fucking scared. Because I was like, you know how it goes, man. Like. I don't care if you fought or not. You know how it goes. When when you get a contender series and you lost, and you lost the way I lost, everybody's like, he's probably not coming back the same. Or, you know, uh, he's going to have to fight three, four more fights. And it only took me one fight. And I called out, you know, what how I called out and, and got my shot back. And then it was like, you want to talk about being even more scared, let alone what I was dealing with in that situation yeah. leading up, which you watched. It's like, it never stopped. It was like, I get over it. But here's what I've also had to learn mentally. Problems don't go away. There's always new ones. It's just about how you roll with the new ones. Because you're never, it, it's a world filled with problems. You're never going to get rid of your problem. It's just how well do you deal with the next problem. But at any point, did you feel like it's just too many problems? Yeah. And, Hot. and what did you do? Fucking cried. Cried. Uh, say a little prayer. Call somebody. Did you, were you ever close to quitting? Yeah. Yeah, a bunch. When, when, when was the closest? When I broke my arm. Yeah, when I broke my arm, I felt useless. I was sitting out back on the patio particularly. I remember just like looking up. It was a nice sunny day. It was you know good weather. And I just remember looking up like, what the fuck am I living for? I just gave, oh, what if I chose the wrong thing? <laughs> what, if, what if I just wasted 18 years of my life? It's gone. How many fights do I have to come back? What if I what if I don't get on a winning streak? What if I'm not good enough? Like what the fuck? Like you know, you start questioning everything because you don't understand. You don't know how to accept what went what, what went down. Like how would anybody accept that? Especially when it's everything that you've ever dreamed of, you know. And and, and this past fight that I had, everything I ever dreamed of when I would like when, an actual dream, not just thoughts. What I would actually dream was about walking out to a crowd, you know. And I got to do that. And I got to do that with the Rocky song and shit. I was pissed they didn't air it, but. You know, that to me was a dream come true. You know, fuck the fight. It was the walkout. How did you turn the corner there? Like from that sunny day, how does someone like yourself get out of that funk? Yeah. Um, I mean, I had I had a, uh, a really good girlfriend at the time that was, uh, 
you know, constantly reminding me, like, I think you can do it. I think you can do it. I think you can do it. My coach, um, he was like, hey, listen, we just got to get through this, you know. There was, but it wasn't really anybody in particular that could pull me out of that depression or that self-pity. It was me having to make the decision that, hey, either you're going to give up or you're going to sit here and you're going to feel sorry for yourself. Mm. Or you're going to fucking sack up and, you know, do what you got to do and, and start this, you know, take this therapy serious and this rehabilitation and, and, and figure out the next moves. You know, I knew I had to make a change leading up to the contender, so I think that was the hope too. It was like... I was in a gym that was a jujitsu gym, and it wasn't an MMA gym. There was no MMA classes. There was no MMA cage. There was no MMA boxing coach. There was no kickboxing coach. I had Sam Orpiza, who was a full-time worker with a fiance and a family, who I could get two, three sessions in, like 40 minutes at a time, at 5 a.m. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then COVID hit, so like I knew I had like, I, bro, I wasn't, I, I had eight pieces missing from a 10 piece puzzle. Right. And I still made it. So I was like, I, in my head, I was like, man, I fix these things. I'm gonna smash these motherfuckers. I fix these things, I'm gonna get better. And I just, so I reached out to Sean Brady. I've known Sean Brady for a long time, you know. He's getting married on oh, yes. Friday. I feel bad for Sean, you know, he he texted me as a quick, like he, I, I remember first saying that the UFC was coming to Jersey yeah. and this was months ago. And, and he's like, bro, do you have any info? Like, that's the one I wanna be on. He's like, the, just please tell me it's not May 6th. That's the one weekend. Yeah. And I was like, it's I'm okay. sorry, man. It's May 6th. Uh, I felt so bad for him because that would be perfect for him as a Philly guy. You going yeah. to that wedding? Yeah, I am going to that. Okay. Yeah, I'm going nice. to that. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I wouldn't miss it. You know what I mean? Um, uh, he means a lot to me. But, uh, you know, I, I reached out to him and he, we had been talking over the years. I had come in there before um, and just did like a sparring session. Like I used to train with Corey Anderson a lot. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you know, he'll tell you the evolution of my game in itself. You know, I used to be a kid that would get fucked up by him and beat the shit out of him, and then I started doing really well, you know, and 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 grew. But uh, but yeah, you know, I talked to him. I went in there. I seen Coach John and them, and I made that change. You know, that's the long story short is that I reached out to somebody and I made that change before I was even allowed to train. Okay. And then I had to get another surgery, but I I said, hey, I'm joining this gym. And then I, I went and trained a couple sessions. I hit pads with John. I was like, man, like I feel like I'm breaking my elbow every time I punch. Because I was basically like yeah. snapping against its own bone. I had to go get another surgery, came back and jumped right in there, man. And I jumped right in with Sean. Sean beat the shit out of me because I was training uh, for his, I was a southpaw who had never trained southpaw for his Michael Chiesa fight. Mm. And I got beat the fuck out of him. <laughs> I was skinny as shit too. Yeah. You know, imagine coming back. Like my yeah, arm, yeah. I could put my fingers around my arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can imagine that. I could yeah. put my fingers around my arm. That it is. was literally just a bone. So obviously you have, you're banged up this and that. These things are going to happen. But it seems like for the past year or so, it's been a pretty great run for you. Yeah. Because of everything you've been through, are you the kind of person that's always like, okay, when's the sh other shoe going to fall? Or do you feel like, you know, the, that that's done. That part of your life is done. Meaning the bad luck like do i think there's going to be another like bad nah i don't think like that no like nah, I'm, I'm bro I've, I've had so many great things and people help me now especially uh you know but bef you know like leading up like like i didn't i stopped thinking that way because it was it was a condition thing i had to break that chain of thought you know okay. i had to stop thinking that way when you think so negative like yeah sure what, what was I doing that for? So that way when something negative happened, see, man, I told you, like, uh, my, my, me, 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 me. You know, I had to break that, especially if I wanted to break out of that, like, that depression phase and that feel sorry for yourself phase. You have to stop thinking so negatively. And I still do it. I, dude, I'm fucking terrible. I always think negative. I always judge people. I'm always like, man, fuck that guy. Fuck this person. Like, it's just, I think it's just something that's ingrained in me because, I mean, dude, like, there, there's some fucking freaks out there. <laughs> I mean, let's just, there's freaks out there, and I'm not, I'm not filtered about it. Like, there's some fucking weirdos, and I don't like that shit. You know what I mean? Don't bring it near me. Do what you want to do, but don't bring it near me. So I've always, I'm, I'm very negative when, like, I'm very old school, very traditional. Like, uh, I'm not, I'm not with the, the times of these, these fucking kids, man. So, uh, you know, but yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't sit there and think like that anymore because. You know, look at look at how many great things have happened. Look how many bad things happened, but then look at yeah. the comeback. You know, yeah. I didn't do anything special when I won my contender series fight. All I did was knock him out and scream at Dana White because I was pissed at him because he said that Dustin Stoltzfus was beating the shit out of me before I lost. So like, go back and watch the fucking fight. You know what I mean? I was I was pissed about that. And then all these people that were like, oh, at least you got tweeted by Dana White. And I was like, bro, go fuck yourself. You know what I mean? I was broken. Yeah. You think you know, as as the ambulance doors are closed and I'm getting carted out, I didn't even get to say, shake his hand, say nothing. 
18 years is gone. So I get in, I get pissed off about that shit because, you know, everybody counted me out. I fought Ozzy Diaz and 94% of these fucking nerds thought I was going to get knocked out. And I was like, bro, what? Tapology, bro. Yeah. I was like, shit, people... You know, I, I have Tapology open right now. They're the best. But, like, you never think that the fighters are looking at that about themselves. Yeah. You even talking about being in the back, and they're replaying the arm break. I can't even imagine what's going on. You're in the back getting ready to— I was to... heated. I was heated. I had to keep it so under control, but I was heated. I was like, these motherfuckers. <laughs> like, I, you know, at that point, I was so strong, like, yeah. and, and believing in myself, and I fought like shit. I fought like shit. Go back and watch that yeah. fight, Ariel, and then go watch the fight right. with Gerald. I mean, obviously they're two different fighters, and I don't hold G Gerald in a very high regard as far as striking, you know. But uh, you know, veteran. But yeah, yeah, no, veteran. He's he beat tough yeah. guy. He beat yeah. Bruno Silva, who just looked pretty right. good, right? He beat Mahmoud Muradov, who I thought was really good, and, and he is really good. But you know, like, it, <laughs> like there was a difference between me physically sure. then and now, and the way I fought then and now. It's just the more I free up here. It, it's like clearing out iCloud space, man. I got a lot of I got a lot of fucking room to grow, so uh, I'm when not you, even. When there. do you think you're you're like in the discussion at 85? What do you What do you predict? Where do I think I'm at? No, no, no. When do you think you get into that discussion? You know the discussion, like the top dogs. When do you think that happens? How far away are we from that? Because could have happened already. Could have. Could have. What do you mean by? I could've? said no. You said it could have. It could have happened. I could have jumped into you know the top tier. That you were offered something yeah, on short yeah, notice against yeah. who? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if Come I can on, say. Man. You just I, opened wait, your soul to us. Can I, can, I, can I say? I don't know if no I can say. Can. I don't know. I don't have anybody here that can tell who me. Who do we I got? Can't, Who's can't that? Say, Mike right? over there? What's can I up, say Mike? what I was offered? For, for a fight? Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Uh, so I got offered uh, Nasruddin Amavov. Oh, yeah. And I like him. I think he's tough. Is that the one that Strickland took? Yeah. In December. Yeah, the one that Strickland, Strickland beat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I got offered him. You know, I respect the guy, and but it was too soon. You know what I mean? It was too soon. Yeah, and I, 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 yeah, what do I need to rush it. for? Yeah, yeah. I don't need to rush. You know what I mean? Call me, call me a bitch. Call me a pussy. No, call man, me whatever. You gotta, you gotta I respect the man. Yeah, listen. I, first of all, the main reason I said no is because I had an injury uh, that I have to get fixed. And then I would die. There's no way. I, I, I got too big. Like, there's no way. Yeah. yeah. I, need, I need a camp. And I mean, I'm not. Be like this time next year, you're in that discussion? I think before that. Oh, really? Okay. I before that. Oh, wow. Yeah. This Bro, is I mean, I, I, listen, I'm very happy. Dana White treats me good. Um, I don't know the man personally, you know, but as far as business, it's been good. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm not making buku dollars, so that's why I don't want anybody in the top 15. You yeah. Know what I mean, I'm not stupid. I'm not going to, I'm not going to fight the toughest guys in my career without that ma that part of it matching yeah i'm not dumb yeah you know what i mean i've been in the game a long time and that's where it's eddie alvarez and people that mentor yeah, me yeah. And guide me. oh eddie's the best and and, and vayner sports with Lloyd. Yep, yep and dsg with disruptive Marty. sports group you know yep. like i have a lot of really good people around me that are just you like you got a team man i got a team yeah. i got a fucking unit yeah that's why i say i'm an absolute fucking yeah. unit. <laughs> you know what i mean that's not just me by myself that's with my team that cares about me and i've really been able to develop a team that I think is going to be better than anybody that's done it so far. And why, 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 what do you see that I can't possess? I already got something. I'm not as big as them, but I got something that can be a Jorge Masvidal, that could be an Izzy, that could be a John Jones. You know what I mean? I got something there. And and why, you know, everybody says this cliche shit, but why can't it be me? No, for sure. I, I, I believe it 100%. By the way, you mentioned uh, girlfriend, this and that. Like, just curious, like your, your experiences as a kid, has that affected? 100%. Yeah. 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 I uh I don't really know how to accept love that well. Right. Um even though I'm a love lo like loving person like I am loving but there's a certain part where it's like you get too deep and I'm just like stuck. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. So I think that comes from just not knowing how to be the killer and be the lover. You know what I mean? That's why I've really struggled and failed in my relationships and um yeah, it's just tough. I'm just not there yet. You know what I mean? I'm not there where I'm like I got to figure out those emotions still. Sure. I mean, I didn't have a great example with a father and a mother. They they were not right. very affectionate and loving to each other. So it's like, I just feel like I try. I do a really good job of trying with what I know how, but I fucking suck at it. Well, man, gotta... you, <laughs> you, you are an open book and it's very uh, refreshing and inspiring to see someone speak about really difficult topics and, and, and sensitive topics with such ease and passion. And that's why the documentary is so great. So it's called The Road to the UFC, Joe Pfeiffer. There's a, there's a there's a screening tomorrow, but it, it won't, it's not out yet, right? Because yeah, no. I know people are going to ask, 
but hopefully soon it will be on some sort of platform stream. You guys are working on that, yeah, correct? There's the, yeah, we do this premiere. Feels inevitable. We do the screening and yeah. then, uh, yeah, yeah, the Jerry and Chitty OC. There it is, yeah. You know, we do that. We go there. We kill it. Um, you know, just really, like, present what we are. You know, let some big names and people see it, and then uh, you know, figure out who wants to to bid on it and take it to the that next level. Love it. And for uh, whatever it's worth, I loved it. Connor in the back watched it. He loved it. Uh, it's like it, the whole thing felt like it was ten minutes long, to be honest, because it's just so compelling. <laughs> I can't watch it. It Makes me too. Upset. I can't even imagine, man. We did watch it before my last fight, though. We got hyped. Oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's one thing for me to watch about someone else. It's your story, and the footage again is just amazing that you guys have all that stuff. Um, I really appreciate you stopping by. When people stop by, you know, I, I can't really look at you. You're a unit, as you said. I can't beat you in anything athletic, <laughs> but we do like to play darts before, and this is my way of trying to, you know, be cool in front of the athletes. Oh, yeah. I'm a big darts guy. I don't know if you know this. I love darts. I did not. And we do three versus three. So you shoot three, and I shoot three. The guy with the higher number wins. Uh, we've had a long list of people stop by. In fact, we do have the leaderboard here. Um, Sky Nicholson, the Olympian, is the only one to actually beat me in studio. Jack Shore was uh, here virtually, and he cheated, so I don't really count him as a winner for number two. But oh, look yeah. at Chael P. I beat Chael P. He got a 40. I beat him with a 75. Damn. And uh, you're up next. We've got uh, some other people here. Mike, you, you, you will not do worse than Michael Rappaport, the great actor who got a zero. Yeah, he nah, missed I'm the not board three times. What? Which is insane to me. I thought he was joking. That guy's dookie. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's really crazy. Anyway, uh, are you down? I am down. Let's I'll go. take this bent arm and try to whoop your ass. Yeah, see, that's the thing. You've got the, uh, the bum arm, so I apologize. What's up, Mike? How are you? So uh, I'll let you choose the, uh, the, the, the darts, whichever ones you I'm want. Take these. You want those? Yeah, okay, want I'm going to take these. Now, here's the thing. I'm very kind as a host. I let, uh, I let you take a practice shot. Now, this is the board right over here. I do want to point out, how tall are you? 6'2". Yeah, 6'2". So you got the light here. Just you know, you got the camera. This obviously is the board. You've, you've, you've thrown a dart before. Yeah. By the way, it's our first time using this brand new dart given to us by Madison Square Garden because there's going to be the North American Championships at MSG on June 2nd and 3rd. So you're the first one to christen this. All right. I just want to let you know. Fair you get enough. one practice shot, okay? All right. Here it is, Joe Pfeiffer. Okay, it's not bad. Nice and smooth. Shitty four. <laughs> it's, a, it's a four, but it, you know, it could be worse. We had a lot of people miss the board. Okay, so here we go. I'm not going to miss. Three versus three, me versus you. The you only... going your three first? Oh, no, you go first. Oh, so, I go first. Please, please. Hi, so, man. Yes, always go first. The only athletic thing that I could beat Joe Pfeiffer at. Here's number one. Okay, what is that, a ten? A ten. Nice. A fucking one. A right? one, okay, not bad. That and a is, 12, right? That is a 12, yeah. Okay, so what do we got there? Uh, a 23. How do you feel about that? You see you moving the arm a little I bit. I feel like it's all right. No, it's just hurting? like, no, 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 okay. no, no, no. It doesn't hurt. It's just I don't fucking be, uh, getting used to it, you know? Cause I, I all right, so 23. You feel good about that? I feel all right. All right, here we go. I, I mean, not, I've not never, I've one. never played on this board before, so I could be a little bit. Could have had everything but fucking one. Oh, there's a 16, right? This fucking guy. <laughs> Oh, there's another 16. Oh, there's 16. 32. All right. And the breaks, Joe. I mean, I hate to be the guest. And uh, that was a... Uh, 17? That was a 2. So uh, 16, 16, 32, 34. Okay. So I, Damn. I beat you, Joe. Sorry <laughs> about that, man. I appreciate I'm it. Sorry. You know, I, don't, I, Damn. I hate to be a rude There should be a double or nothing just because I am handicapped. But, yeah, you know. But I understand. Breaks. You know you what? Take Next time you come on, you go back to the drawing board, you go to the local pub, and you practice... <laughs> And uh, we'll Fair have enough. a rematch. Fair His name is Joe Pfeiffer. The Thank documentary you. is Journey to the UFC, Joe Pfeiffer. It's going to come out soon. And wherever it comes out, whenever it comes out, you have to watch it. It will give you, you probably have infinite appreciation for this man. It will give you exponential appreciation for this man. Thank you for coming Thank in. You. Thank you, brother. And I hope Appreciate this will it. maybe make you like New York a little bit more. I did. I did. This is, was a great opportunity. I've been watching you for, I told you this before, I've been watching you for years and years. Thanks, so, man. Um, you're doing your own thing too, and this was cool to actually see the setup because I've watched that backdrop for years. <laughs> Thank you.